Hey, Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. In today's video, as you can see, I'm in my vehicle. We're on our way again to the friggin' pet store. And that's because I've been noticing some odd behavior in some of my terrapins. So as you guys know, I'm a huge advocate for like very, very basic Diamondback Terrapin setups. Well, just mostly aquatic turtle setups simply because a lot of people go, I mean, and I don't blame you. If it's your only pet, you can go overboard and you can add decorations and all this other fun stuff. But like someone like me who has like 40 something turtles, I usually don't for simplicity's sake and also in order to, oh my God, lose my camera. Ah! Anyway, basically I usually do it for simplicity's sake. So it's easier to clean and easier to keep up and do maintenance because I have so many animals. But the other day I noticed I've been raising some ornate diamondback terrapins and they've been all doing great and everything's been fine until now. I noticed some of them chewing on the fake plastic plants that I put in. My very, very basic setup is like concrete mixing tub, heater, filter, and then like just fake plants. And I don't even provide a basking area or anything like that because that way it, it contributes to higher humidity and it contributes to their smooth shell growth. Otherwise they'll dry themselves out on a basking area. That's still debated. Take that advice, take it or leave it. That's a whole different topic, not the point of today's video. The point of today's video is do turtles get Board. I've done a video on uh, like about this in the past and I've talked about it before but this is one of the first times where I've actually noticed like my terrapins have have gotten bored because they, they have nothing else to do and now they're not only starting to focus on chewing on those plastic plants they could ingest them and have all kinds of uh, internal issues I actually have a friend whose terrapin had to she was having a lot of issues spent a couple hundred dollars at the vet because her terrapin ingested those fake plants the marine land like bamboo whatever it's like the go-to standard that i use for fake plants and most people do so the point is the reason you know normally terrapins can ingest things like that and and usually not have issues but they shouldn't be chewing on those fake plants anyway that chewing on the fake plants comes from a need and inherent desire in terrapins specifically but other turtles will do this too to freaking rock just hit my windshield for turtles to forage to like dig around in the gravel and the sand and the substrate and, and and pick apart at different food and mollusks snails fish whatever they're able to find this is more apparent in terrapins because they are almost entirely scavengers the prey that they eat are mollusks and snails which don't really move very quickly so they're easy to eat but it's basically like a foraging activity same goes for map turtles uh, because they're very closely related so basically in today's video I am going to be looking for crush coral and maybe some fish maybe some ghost shrimp just things to all right party people my uh camera ran out of storage the point is no longer can turtles get bored the point is my turtles are bored so i'm gonna do some things to try to fix that so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try the goal of today is to get them some substrate some crush coral because that is most uh in, like replicating what they would find in nature some people argue impactions and whatnot are an issue in terrapins much less so because they're built for eating clams and corals not coral clams and shrimp and uh, um snails and things gastropods that have hard shells so it actually helps like their digestive system so some aragonite or which is just finer crushed coral or crushed coral preferably, I am hoping to find today for map turtles, gravels fine. If you're worried about impactions, use sand, but some type of substrate to allow them to dig and forage in might actually be helpful. If that doesn't work, then I'm thinking about getting a couple of different fish, maybe some feeder shrimp and whatnot, just some stuff to give them something to do. Terrapins in particular, I guess they, they like to chew stuff. So some rocks or some things just for them to munch on is what I'm hoping to find today. Not happy to be back, but what are you gonna do? Look at this thing, look at that, that's sweet. A vanilla lobster, that's gonna be my only Dan's name. Every time I come here, I have to struggle to not buy everything. Okay, so I'm not really looking for gravel, especially not $23 gravel, when I could just get pea gravel from Home Depot for like eight bucks, but anyway, I'm looking for crushed coral. And actually it's funny because like, like this, this is what I'm looking for, this stuff here, basically. So I'm just looking around, not finding it, but I don't know, I'm hopeful. Bingo, 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 bingo. And I don't need the live stuff because it's just, it's turtle like snack for them to munch on and chew on. So we don't need, you know, it live where it's got like bacteria and everything and it's still wet and yeah, we don't need that, we need this. So like, did I need to buy 20 pounds of the stuff? No, do I want to? Yes, because I just figure I've been doing a lot of just like buying extra of whatever I need just in case because uh, I, I'll use it at some point, probably, maybe. The other day I bought, 
How am I gonna do this? Okay, the other day I bought like five heaters on Amazon. It's locked, the car's locked. Hold on, we win these. I'm holding, I got the crush coral here. We got this here. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so anyway, the other day I bought like five of the uh, like marine land bamboo, that plant that I was talking about, those fake plants. I bought four of those and I bought three 300 watt heaters because it's just stuff that I can always use. That stuff, I'm going to go sprinkle it in every single terrapin enclosure I have now. Yeah, so that, that I'm happy. Wow, I really did not expect them to have that. It was in the saltwater section. It was not in the fresh water with the gravel and whatnot. Anyway, let's get back home and let's put that in the enclosures and see how the terrapins interact with it. Look, look, <laughs> what the dog doing? Okay, so now that I'm back home, um, this stuff is, is really dusty. Whenever you get like gravel or sand or substrate or whatever it may be, you're definitely gonna wanna go ahead and give it a really good rinse. And that's because this stuff can be really dusty. And if you put it directly in your tank, it will be really super duper cloudy and get absolutely everywhere and then you're going to be doing water changes wishing look there's a puff of, of look there's like a puff of dust coming off of this as i dump it in and you're going to be regretting not having cleaned it in the first place because it's much easier to clean it before you put it in the tank than after so guys check this out on the side of the bucket right here see how this dust this would just get all up in your tanks and whatnot. So I'm uh, gonna go ahead and rinse all this stuff out. So now what we do is I'm gonna take this bucket of crushed coral, uh, aragonite, I'm going to just rinse it. Just keep filling and, and draining out the bucket. I've done this before. I'm just gonna do that a couple times till it runs clear and then put it in all the enclosures. Y'all, got milk. This is what I'm talking about. Imagine all of this, this is after three, three entire fills and refills and I'm still stirring it up and it's just getting it even worse. Imagine all of this in your guys' tanks. This is why we rinse this stuff out, guys. Freaking milk! So now that this stuff is washed, it's running clear. Generally, I'm gonna take a couple cupfuls and toss it in this enclosure with the ornates and this enclosure with the flipper babies. I'm not gonna put it in with these little ornates. These ones, if you guys don't know, are available on my Patreon. If you hit the link right up over here, you get to support me and the channel and whatnot. And when I have little baby turtles available, I only ever sell turtles either produced by me or from somebody that I know, that I trust, that are true captive born, you know, terrapin. So consider hitting the link up there and checking that out. Hi, little boogers, but I'm not gonna put any in here. Maybe a cupful if I want to, we'll see. Anyway, I'm gonna get started putting it in the enclosures. Check it out, these terrapins, if this would please focus, are already chewing, sorting through, looking for little icky nasties and little things to eat, little spare pieces of food and whatnot, and they're already grazing on this crushed coral. This is awesome. Check it out though, they are just hounding this stuff down, chewing on it, sorting through it. This is definitely really, really good. I'm, I'm really glad that I put this in. So anyways, this is just one way that I'm helping to entertain my turtles, but you guys can do things like add driftwood, live or fake plants, uh, feeder guppies or a little feeder shrimp or whatnot, ghost shrimp. This is why I always say feeder guppies and ghost shrimp are two of my favorite things to add to enclosures because if they live, then they're enrichment and they are distractions for the turtles and they also help to clean up the tank a little bit. And if they get eaten, then they're a nice and healthy snack. So those are just a few ways that I am helping to enrich the lives of my turtles. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see y'all in the next one.